The Collaboration Conversation is brought to you by Project Brickworks, the new ministry dedicated to equipping Christians to use their talents and gifts to bring others into a relationship with King Jesus. We started the Collaboration Conversation as a way for our guests to share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the talents and gifts that God has given them. Good morning. Uh, Today, our guest is Bria Jocelyn. Hey, Bria. Good morning. Um, And she is such a sweet new friend. We had a nice conversation um, at one of her daughter's plays and just really hit it off, both being from Southern California. And um, she and my husband, Sarah's dad, uh, teach together at a school in in Middle Tennessee. And you really are one of the busiest moms in America. Um, And I'm glad that you get to document your uh, family adventures on Facebook because we get to, you know, follow along and, you know, vicariously. Very entertaining. Yeah. uh, (laughs) be part of your journey. So welcome. And we're super glad that you've joined us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, It's nice to meet you. Finally, I have heard so many things about you through my mom. Um, And so for those who may not know you, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. And I've heard a lot about you as well from (laughs) your dad. I have lunch with him occasionally. Um, I don't see him much this year because we have different lunch schedules, but um, I've heard quite a bit about you. And um, so I'm thrilled to be here and um, a part of this. So uh, my name is Bria Jocelyn and um, I'm a California native. We've been in Tennessee for six years now. And um, so born and raised in California, decided, you know, I actually came out to Tennessee on a writer's workshop. Um, One of my favorite authors, Patsy Claremont, was having was hosting a writer's workshop in her home of a small group of women, um, signed up for it, discovered Franklin, thought, where have you been all my life? I want (laughs) to live here. And it was like a movie. And, um, you know, this is where I want to raise my kids. And I just felt a peace here that I'd never felt anywhere else, you know, traveling around with my husband who traveled quite a bit for work. I'd always tag along with him sometimes and go, could we move here? Can we move there? And never felt like I did when I came to Tennessee that this is home. And how do I get here? And I remember finding a neighborhood that trip and I was by myself and just finding a neighborhood, just praying. I got out and walked before I had to get on my flight, had to go to the airport. And I got out and walked and said, Lord, people live here. How do I live here? I want to live here. Um, how, do, how do we make this happen? And so I came home and I told Randy and the kids, hey, we're moving. I don't know when. Um, it may be five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe that's where we'll retire. I'd like it to be sooner, but I found a place where it's going to be home. And so, um, he came out on the tail end of a business trip for him just to check it out. Like, what is this crazy lady talking about? Cause I was obsessed (laughs) and, um, looking at, you know, houses and just praying my little heart out. And, um, he came back and he was like, I see, I see what you mean you know, let's go out there together. So he came, I came out in the fall. He came out in the winter that same year. And then we came back in the spring um, together. And he actually had to drag me out here by that point because um, I I was, I had peace about staying. I thought, you know, I'm just, my heart just wants to just go to the next best thing. Like maybe we just need to stay put. And um, he had to drag me back out here. And I'm so glad I did because on that plane ride home, what, after visiting here, we just decided to up and move. And the kids got out of school in June and we packed up the house. Didn't even have anybody to rent our house. Didn't even have a place to stay until two weeks before we hit the road to come out here. Total faith step. Everyone thought we were crazy. What are you doing? Um, oh my gosh. They, they're for real. They're real. There's a pod in their driveway. They're actually moving. <laughs> and we did it we just did it. We up and moved and, um, everything worked together seamlessly, which never happened in our life. Everything was always, you know, a huge drawn out process, but everything came together so perfectly that first year to get us out here, that first year living here. And, um, we have four daughters. We had four daughters at the time. Now we have five. We have since adopted, um, our youngest daughter. She's seven. She's from China. She has down syndrome and um, probably would have never thought I could ad- adopt or raise a child with Down syndrome had it not been for the job that I started um, four years ago with my kids' school <laughs> and um, with kids with special needs. Um, so how that all came about, like God has just had his hand in every little 
thing. So here we are living in Tennessee and, um, that's, um, that's awesome. Life is crazy. <laughs> it's good. It's crazy. Lots of ups and downs. Lots, it's a roller coaster ride for sure. But well, so what have you guys been doing, uh, during the quarantine? Have you, um, are you guys virtual, the kids virtual or in at, at school? So we are actually in school. Um, there's been a couple of times of different quarantine breaks where some of the kids have been home for a couple of weeks. Um, our high school is doing a hybrid thing, trying it out. We're the guinea pig high school. So my older two go to school twice a week and are home doing online t- um, two days a week. And then um, Fridays are kind of a free day to catch up on all, all their work. Um, that seems to be working. Um, I know our family back home and friends back home, they're all in California. They are all online and kind of homeschooling and um, it works for some, not so much for others. Um, I know when the pandemic first hit, well, we barely made it home with our daughter. If we didn't travel when we did, she'd still be there and we'd still be here waiting. And um, so God had his hand in that, but um I kind of, it was perfect timing for when everything shut down. And I know every, a lot of people were, you know, beside themselves and, oh no, what are we going to do with the kids? To me, it was a huge blessing. And I feel like it was almost an answer to prayer. I kind of felt responsible, like, sorry, (laughs) everything shut down. I mean, I I prayed for it. It didn't mean it for everybody. I just needed (laughs) stuff to stop because we had gymnastics, we had theater, we had, you know, every different direction, jobs, and the kids were going here, there, everywhere. And I was in the car and just, I needed a breather for a day, maybe a week, but I got a few months and it was perfect for us, for our family, for bonding, for our daughter, Sunshine, her name is Sunny or Sunshine. We call her Sunny. And, um, it was such a sweet, peaceful time. Those months spent together, Um, with all of her sisters home in the house and growing and connecting with each other and teaching. And she just learned so much through that time that it was a sweet blessing. So I enjoyed, (laughs) I enjoyed being home during that. Yeah. I mean, you were adding a new family member and to have you guys all there together during that. And uh, I love that. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of people who are struggling as you were talking about, like, this has not been a blessing for a lot of people, but I love that you're able to see the blessing in it and that, um, that yeah, some good came of that for sure. Um, so I guess let's transition a little bit to the, to, to a little bit more on the adoption journey. Um, I think I have part of this, right, but I'd like for you to tell it. How did, how did that come about that you even discovered she existed or, you know, she, you know, you became aware of her and then what that looks like. Um, I, cause I feel like I f- followed it on your, your uh, Facebook page. Um, and it was pretty spectacular. Yeah. So I first saw her picture, a friend of mine had posted on her Facebook page. It was like a Reese's rainbow, which is, um, you know, an advocate site for, um, children with special needs that need families. And so we had followed her adoption journey. Um, she had just adopted a year prior and brought her daughter home from China who had down syndrome. So we had followed her journey this whole time and supported her through that. And, um, always in the back of my mind saying, Oh, I would, if I could, but our family is so crazy. We have so many, there's so many of us, we'd probably traumatize the poor child because, our life is so crazy and so loud. And, um, so I like, always thought I would, if I could, or if we had more room in this house, but you know, in the back of my mind, I was just, you know, thinking maybe, maybe one day. And, um, so she posted a picture of our daughter, um, who was not our daughter at the time, but she posted a picture of this sweet little girl and said, she needs a family. And so I shared it with my friend saying, she needs a family. Who's going to be her mama? And um, I even shared it with some of the people I work with saying, she needs to be at our school. Who's going to bring her home? And so I think that was maybe October that I saw her picture for the first time, stirring in my heart, knowing, Lord, I, you know, she's mine. I know she, like, I feel like she's mine, but the head, you know, logistics of everything, um, just didn't think that it would work out. Well, then she posted again and I'm thankful she did because again, I posted, shared it saying she needs a mom. 
And that's when I showed the, her picture to my daughter. We were in the kitchen and I said, we need to pray for this little girl. She needs a mommy and she needs a family. And Journey um, looked at me and said, why, why can't we be her family? Like, hello, we're a family. <laughs> yeah, think about she that. She needs <laughs> one. Why not? And I was like, well, and her dad was sitting across the room on the couch. And I said, you know, it'd, it'd be a family decision. We can't just say, hey, let's go and get her. Let's bring her home. It's a process. And dad would have to be on board. The whole family would have to be on board. And there's been times when I brought home, you know, stray dogs and it had, you know, didn't work out. And that's, you know, and I was explaining that to her and from the couch, he, he overheard us in the kitchen and he's like, yeah, but this isn't a dog. This is a child. <laughs> and I'm like, so do you want to see her picture? Like, are you, in, you know, so, and that was it. I'm like, I'm inquiring about her. I'm setting a, a message to them and starting the process. And we filled out the application and got the ball rolling. We did everything backwards. Cause usually you decide you're going to adopt and then you do all the paperwork, the home study, then you're matched with a child. And then, you know, but we did everything backwards. We found the child and we didn't even know someone could have beat us to it if they had a home study ready. And so we knew that was a chance and we just kind of quickly did things as fast as we could, got the home study done, our visits done, got our paperwork done. And I am not a paperwork person. (laughs) Um, I have not been to college yet, I think because of paperwork. Like I knew that there was paperwork involved and I just could not handle that. So the fact that if, if I can adopt, anybody can adopt, you know, the paperwork, because everyone says the paperwork is just terrible. If I could do it, there you go. Anybody can do it. That's awesome. Well, Billy and I were praying when you started posting that this little girl needs a family. We were praying for a family. Had no idea we were praying for you. <laughs> and it was kind of a whirlwind. I mean, you guys went through that process fast. I mean, it, you're, yeah, you're talking about you saw her for the first time in October and you had her right at the pandemic beginning. Yeah. So, well, the, I, I think a year had gone by. So October. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. The previous year. So, I mean, it, it took less than a year because we started the process in February. Awesome. So November I had shared her again. Um, and then January. Oh, and so we got back to school after the Christmas break that year and they said, Hey, we have a, a new student at our school and you're going to get to work with her. And, um, it, she was in kindergarten, same age, adopted from China and she had down syndrome. Oh my gosh. That was, and so that was January. And I was like, Lord, <laughs> what? Okay. Knock, knock. He, like, okay. I think I get the memo. He's really trying to and, <laughs> and she was precious. And like, I cried one day watching her eat her lunch. Cause it was just oh. so precious. And, um, so God was, you know, working on my heart. My head had to take a while to catch up. And so February, the beginning of February was when we, um, it was February 2nd. And I inquired about her and the lady said, you'll never believe it, but today is her birthday. <gasps> wow. I just got chilled. I am not <laughs> even joking. And I, uh, yeah. So God uh, just amazes me uh, through every step of the way when I inquired about her and I'm like, we want her. How do we do this? I've never done this before. I think we're doing it backwards. And she's like, I just looked at her file and today is her birthday. I'm That's literally awesome. about to cry. Yeah. That is- so, so awesome. special. So, and that was um, February. We started the process. We came home with her. We traveled in December through Christmas, brought her home. We were home January 4th. So she, and that, that was my prayer. I want her home before her birthday, before her next birthday. Wow. So that is so incredible. Well, but tell us about the song. There was a song that kind of uh, was strategic in all of this. Okay, so there has been a song. So a couple of years ago, I found out one of my you know favorite '80s songs. Um, it's called "Kiri" by Mister Mister, and I just I I love that song. Growing up, I never even knew what the lyrics were. I thought there were, it was talking about some girl named Kiri. Oh yeah. yeah. My friend thought it was uh, my friend Sharon thinks that the lyrics were "Carry a laser," but the lyric it's "Kiri a laser." And, um, I never knew what it meant until I saw a singer, um, named Sandy Patty. I don't know if you know who that is. Sandy Patty had posted on Facebook one, one time of her family singing the song saying it's one of her favorite songs and what it meant. And it, um, Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. And so I'm like, 
my mind blown. Like here, I've been singing it wrong. <laughs> didn't really know. And I'm the queen of misheard lyrics. Uh, I sing all the songs wrong, Same. but that song, I loved it even more. Like it wasn't just some eighties song, you know, earworm that gets in and you start singing, but it became kind of an anthem to me um, ever since I had heard that. And I would find myself singing it in my head anytime. Like I was anxious or afraid or, you know, sometimes you don't even know why you're nervous or anxious. It's just like, there. And I would find myself singing that song and saying, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so the morning we woke up to travel to, um, to China, we brought our youngest daughter at the time. She was, um, nine when we traveled with her and the other girls stayed with family and friends. Um, that morning we woke up, it was pouring down rain and it was cold, you know, it's December. It was dark traveling to the airport. And I was just nervous. Are we going to you know, be safe on the way to the airport. Are we going to make it? There's just so many unknowns, you know, to get there and traveling during the holidays and missing out on family stuff. I was just, you know, the hamster wheel was going about um, just nerves and anxiousness. Found myself singing that song, carry, carry a lays on down the road that I must travel. Yeah. Um, so I'm not a singer, but awesome. um, for those that, you know, need to remember how it goes. And so I was singing that song. We made it to the airport. Everything was great. Um, and then, um, again, God worked everything, every perfect detail out. Maybe that's a story for another time. While we were in China, things that happened, um, meeting her foster family, having them bring her to us at our hotel room, um, which never happens. It's just the way they didn't have the staff members available to do it the way that they normally do it. Um, and getting to have lunch with her foster family. We were told when we were picked up at the airport that it, we probably wouldn't meet the foster family. We prob probably wouldn't get to see the orphanage. Um, but we got to do all those things, but we were told don't count on it because oh, it doesn't happen. It, ju it just doesn't happen, but um, it happened for us. Um, and then um, just had an amazing time in China. We loved China. We'd love to go back. We'd love to bring them all home. And Brandy on the way home on the plane was like, let's go back. Let's just keep traveling and bringing babies home. But we, we loved China. Um, it was such a special time for us. Um, but on the way to the airport, I was feeling that anxious feeling again on the way home um, in, the, in the car on the way to the airport in China. And again, I was singing that song in my head. Awesome. And um, Lord have mercy. Just that was my prayer. Lord have mercy over everything. Mercy, mercy for travels, mercy for um, our children at home. Cause our children, two of our children were traveling home from California at the same time. And we're going to meet us at the house at the same time. So just, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle of getting everybody back home. Um, and so I was singing that song and on the news that morning, there was some tension in one of the um, countries that we had to fly th through and have a, a layover in. And it was kind of big on the news and people were actually texting us saying, are you sure you're flying through there? Like, cause things are kind of, it doesn't look very safe. So again, worry. And I just asked for prayer on Facebook. I just said, please pray for us. We need this. I shared the story about, I'd been singing the song and I shared the video of the song, like, here, this is the song that's been getting me through it. Well, we, um, it was a long journey home and we finally made it to New York. So we're on U.S. soil and we're on the last leg of our flight and we're about to go up an escalator in the airport. And I almost fell to my knees because on the speakers in the airport was playing Curie Eleison by Mr. Mr., and, um, I, wh wh when did they play that song? I rarely even hear it. It's an old song in an airport. It's usually elevator music or like, yeah. but God was like, I got this. I got you. You're going to make it just have peace. And here you go. Like he knew I just needed to hear it. And it wasn't for anyone else, but I, you know, almost fell over. Yeah. Because here it was playing in the airport. And since then, and we made it home safe and everything was great. Our kids made it home safe from California. Good. Since then, I've been driving around. This has happened two or three times. I've been driving around. One time there was a tornado 
threat. And I was trying to make it home. I was scared, you know, do I need to pull over, find a ditch, a culvert, you know, bury myself and the kids, what are we going to do? And that song came on the radio and I was like, peace just washed over me. I'm going to make it. That is awesome. That is incredible. I I will. And I, you put it on Facebook when it happened and I'm like, Billy, you have got to come read this right now. It was, it was just such a great testament. So. And I, I remember because I had posted about it on the way to the airport. I remember saying, because it was just giving me peace, like distracting my mind, saying, here's a story. I've been singing this song this whole trip. And here's the video. If you guys don't know what it means, it means, Lord, have mercy. Here's the lyrics. Just sharing it to say, did you guys know about this song? Did you know that that's what it meant? And I had just discovered it a while ago. And, and it's helping me get through it. And then, you know, and he needed, like, my Facebook community to see that as well. Like Absolutely. she's just shared about it and here he is playing it for me in the airport. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's great. Yeah. That is incredible. I'm sorry, but that's incredible. <laughs> I'm in awe. God is just so good. Are yeah. you crying? I'm sorry. Yes, I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying earlier. This is the first time we've cried in podcasts. I know. Well <laughs> done, Bria. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so I want to talk about your family um, some more a little bit later. But first, I want to ask you, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, our podcast and not just our podcast, but our new ministry is all about gifts and talents. And the fact and we have discovered this through all of the interviews, through reading and just prayer over the last however long. um, But just that that can gifts and talents can be used in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be pastoral. It doesn't have to be in the arts. It can literally be in anything. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, we obviously know that working with special needs kids is a huge talent of yours and something that God gave you that, that I don't know, t- talent might not be the right word, but he gave you that gift. Yeah. And so I wanted to um, ask you about that gift and talent, um, as well as some of your other gifts and talents and how you're using those. Um, okay. Well, uh, I've always been more super aware of my weaknesses, I'd say, than, than my strengths and talents. That could be. A um, <laughs> and yeah, my husband would say my, um, my spiritual gift, I have a spiritual gift of lateness <laughs> because I, and I'm, I'm always late, but I'm never in a hurry. Um, which, which is true. Like I do, I do run late, but I want to arrive alive and with peace. And sometimes it is what it is. And you can only do so much to get out of the house with so many people and so many things to mark off the checklist. Totally. Um, But um, yeah, I, I do. I never knew I had a a gift for working with special needs until I, I started working with them. And I think probably because I have special needs as well. I mean, don't we all, but I, I struggled with, um, with, I have attention deficit disorder, um, kind of struggled with it, um, probably since middle school and even into adulthood. So I I can relate on that level and, um, even anxiety, depression, um, through my life, even at a younger, you know, when I was six, my parents got divorced. So I kind of went through, and our dog passed away. So I went, I've been, you know, struggling with depression, and anxiety, like the rug was pulled out from underneath me. Um, so I just feel like I can connect on that level um, with these kids that, you know, go through all, you know, some are on the spectrum, some just deal with a lot of stuff. So um, yeah, I guess that's one of my gifts. I also think that prayer is one of my gifts. I'm, I'm not one to usually like pray out loud in, in a group, but I know when I pray, I know my, my prayers are answered and, um, in just, you know, small ways too, small prayers, big prayers. Um, so I think that's one of my gifts. And also just, I like to connect people and it's amazing the way that God has put so people in my life where I'm like, Hey, you need to meet this person or matchmaking and like, Hey, you need to get together. You need to meet um, this person. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, I, I'm a connector and includer. I hate to see people left out, feel left out in a group, maybe because I've felt left out in a group before. Um, so I, I hate to see people feel lonely or that they're not, um, included or they don't belong. So I don't know, maybe those are some of my gifts. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't, 
you know, we haven't known each other a real long time. Um, really, we've only connected a couple of times in person. But I would say you've got to have the gift of encouragement just from the things that I've seen, especially on Facebook, I guess. Do you, do you feel like that at all? Uh, I am an encourager and uh, I'd like to find the good in people or, and sometimes I feel like I can see things that maybe they don't see about themselves. Like, Hey, you should write a book. This is a book. Your life is a book. You should, you know, Oh no, I can't, I can't write. Or I'm like, then speak it, speak your book, speak it into your computer or have a conversation with a friend and record it. There's your book. Let it, let it write itself because some, everyone has a story to tell. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I, I am an encourager and I can see things in people that maybe they don't see about themselves. Um, so I like to build them up and yeah, that's a great gift. Well, so, and you and I can relate on this topic a little bit more since it's about kids, sorry. Um, but just this idea of being um, intentional about um, identifying our kids, gifts and strengths and talents and things kind of early on and encouraging them. And in the communication we had back and forth via email, I loved how you had already kind of identified strengths for each of your girls. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So our five girls, they're all completely different personalities and which is interesting for, you know, four of them come from the same two parents and they're all completely different, completely different bents on um, what they're gifted with. But um, we tried sports early on with our older two when they were little and Randy coached their soccer team. And um, we just knew they, it, it wasn't for them. They'd sit picking flowers and doing cartwheels and he'd be <laughs> coaching the kids and um, they, they just were not athletic um, and that's okay. Yes, it is. And we just, you know, so we try to give them opportunities, like, especially around summertime when camps would come out, you know, we'd get like a little catalog from the grocery store and find the different camps, like a one week camp and, and let them try different things like art classes and um, theater, try dance. Dancing wasn't a thing for, for some of them too. Some of them have rhythm, some of them not. But, um, and then when we, we moved out here, there were more opportunities like for music for our oldest and they offered guitar classes at her middle school. So she took, you know, like a half a semester of a guitar class, learned a couple chords and then ran with it and taught herself via YouTube. Same with piano. She had a couple piano lessons and um, I wasn't very consistent with it, but she took it and ran with it and learned how to, she taught herself how to play piano. And, um, and we've exposed them to music, like since they were in the womb, I love music. So music was always playing in our house, all different kinds. We had, you know, worship music, country music, a little bit of rap. (laughs) Um, so we just kind of exposed them early on to that and theater. And we would take our kids to concerts. Um, we, so back in the day, wild rivers, I don't know if you knew in Irvine, there's a water park, which is where Randy and I met, which is a story for a whole nother time of God working, um, in my life, in our life. And, um, but next door was, um, an amphitheater. And so some, occasionally we'd get tickets, you know, we're as a lifeguard and, um, sometimes they'd reward us with concert tickets. So, um, we would go to concerts all the time. And then when we had kids, we'd bring them with us, even uh, babies, we'd just bring them. And so I think they've always been exposed to music, the arts. And um, my daughter, Toby, had a paintbrush in her hand. Like I have a picture of her. She's got paint in her mouth. She's like eating the paintbrush. But we would just sit outside like and I think not be afraid to make a mess. Kids are going to be messy, but you got to let them make a mess and and try things out. And they're not always going to be great at things, but give them the opportunity to see what it is. So I think we've just kind of let them develop in there and go, wow, she's kind of good at that. Would you like to continue and do this? So we've got, you know, a musician who loves to write her own songs. We've got an artist and um, one of them is really good at sports and she's the tallest one in the family. We don't know where that came from, but she's just naturally gifted athletically. So we tried to support her in her different sports that she wants to do. Um, Well, and at least, one, if not two or three or four of them are actresses. Um, I saw, what was she, Alice in Wonderland last weekend? Yes, so Lincoln was in Alice in Wonderland. Actually, they, they're all, they all have the drama gene. Yes. Let's yes. just say, they have the drama gene. 
they didn't get it from me. Although I, I can be very theatrical and, but their, their father, um, he was a child actor. He grew up acting, doing commercials and some movies and stuff. And um, so they are all very dramatic and, and gifted in that way. But she grew up watching her sisters do theater, um, do little summer camps, doing theater plays. And in middle school, our middle school has a very um, a wonderful theater program. So she's grown up watching them. And I think just naturally was like, I'm going to do this too. And she's been knocking it out of the park, done a couple musicals and um, she's, she's loving it. She wants to be on Disney. I think just cause she wants to do the, you know, the, the magic wand thing. So I'm like, we'll stick to, to community theater for now. But you know, if, if she wants to pursue that, we're, we'll find a way. You know, it's really funny. That's where Sarah got her start. Was it that same? Not on Disney channel. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that I was, was like, that segue. sounded like I was on Disney. No, that's not. got her start at the same middle school. Same middle school in, this, in the theater department. Yeah. And uh, we, yeah, I, well, I, I we wanted to say this um, just as an encouragement. There is nothing that prepared me for the real world more than my theater experience all throughout middle school, high school. You know, I, I went from play to play to play. I mean, literally, you know. I know, I a, drove you, know, you. Each, each show is a. <laughs> two, three months <laughs> commitment. Yes, you did. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I would be done and I would audition for the next one. It prepared me for rejection. I mean, right. it prepared me for work, like com- commitment to something. Um, and you know, just dedication, hard work. And so, and even though I don't do theater anymore, not that I would be opposed, you know, haven't done a show in probably six years. Um, but it, I just want to encourage you that I love that your kids are in theater. I just think that it's an awesome way to, to gain interpersonal skills, um, working with each other in front of an audience. Like it doesn't necessarily prepare you for public speaking, but it definitely prepares you more than other things. (laughs) Um, so anyway, I just wanted to encourage you because I think that is incredible that you are encouraging them to do that. Even, you know, I also did sports. I did sports and theater. So I just, I want to say that you're doing good. <laughs> but not that I turned out all that awesome, but you are doing such a great job. <laughs> well, and I think that's where we first met was at one of your daughter's plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's just so cool. But I love that, you, that you're investing in them and helping them, you know, experiment and figure it all out. That's great. I'm still figuring it all out. I'm like, what, what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> well, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I will ask myself that question literally forever. <laughs> well, let's transition to this new project that you've got going on. And this is kind of why we connected for this podcast, just that I saw this on Facebook. You are part of an ensemble cast of a new video podcast called Mum Life Community. How did that start? How did you get involved? All that kind of stuff. Well, when we first moved to Tennessee um, and we started going to church, I got involved in a mom's group. And, um, and it was just, you know, we'd have eight women sitting around tables of, you know, there's like maybe 50 to hundred women in groups of eight. And we'd be at the same table with a mentor mom for the whole semester and just getting to know each other. And there would usually be a topic of the day, a guest speaker, someone would speak and um, a biblical application. And then we'd sit around and talk and we'd have discussion questions. And so um, the connections that I made there um, with the leadership team um, Helen and Heather, Helen Smallbone and Heather Hule um, were on the leadership team and they just decided, you know what, what if we grow this and write our own curriculum and um, so we could reach um, more women internationally. They wanted it to be an international program. So Helen's from Australia and um, Heather came from Boston. And um, so they both call their moms, mom, they say they use the word mom um, instead of mom, like, like we do. And so that's, that became the name of it was mom life. And it stands for mothers uplifting mothers. Love that. So, um, and that's really what it is. And that was just their dream to um, connect women, to reach women out there who may not have a group um, or, um, just to get, connect them, let them know that they're not alone and that we all go through struggles. So it's um, just conversations about struggles and triumphs and women being real. And that's what it became is, 
you know, you just kind of let your hair down and this is who I am. This is what it is. Oh, you do that too. Or I'm not so alone or, okay, I thought it was just me. And because it's hard, mothering's hard and it's gotten harder. I think, um, you know, with technology and the things that we have to, you know, look out for, for our kids and their connections and what are they into and what are they being exposed to on the bus or, you know, at recess and all that. So I feel, um, like we need each other and we need to have those conversations and be real. And this group of women. Um, so I, I started to do mom life, but then I got the job. So I, I had the interview next year when we decided to merge our groups with another church and launch the mom life, um, group at another church. And, um, but they've always kept me in the loop and, um, uh, included me. And I'm thrilled that they asked me to, to be a part of it because these women, um, their stories that they have to share, um, their wisdom, there's nine of us in this podcast. And out of the nine of us, we have 36 kids (gasps) ranging in ages from, um, birth or infant to adulthood. And, um, Helen is now a grandmother. And, um, I don't know if you know, if you've heard of Helen Smallbone, but her, she has seven children and, um, three of them are very well-known musicians in the Christian community. Uh, her, two of her sons are, um, for King and country, the band and her daughter, her oldest daughter is, um, Rebecca St. James. So, and she's been in the music industry for years and, um, and the whole family kind of works in the, in the business, helping out their siblings and each other. And it's really just a beautiful family of, and her story of how they came here from Australia and their struggles. And she's just op- very open and honest with us about her mistakes and her things that she's gone through. And it's just a real raw conversation of a group of moms um, getting together and just discussing things and how, how do we get through this or what do you do when, when this happens or how do you relax? How do you recharge? Um, we discover, we, we talk about all the topics in this first season and um, it's amazing um, the response that we've gotten from a lot of moms that they feel like, wow, I feel like I'm just sitting in the room with you and I needed to hear that today or, you know, they're in their car on the way to work and um but the response has been great, not just from moms, but from some men also, even the men who put the podcast together, who helped us with the recording, or they went back and did the editing. And um, we heard some stories of them being touched by, you know, certain topics that were discussed and they, and thinking that, wow, I thought if you got a group of women together, they'd be, you know, bashing their husbands the whole time. And it's not that it's women encouraging women and sharing their stories and being real and raw and authentic and having that, those conversations, which I feel like we need today because a lot of it's airbrushed, Mm -hmm. you know, these people that we follow, everything is perfect and they're Christmas trees and everything is just, and uh, life is real. It's not airbrushed and filtered out. It's, it's real. Amen. (laughs) Totally. Oh my gosh. That is so incredible. And I want to encourage our listeners to um, go and check you guys out. So I want to share a quick clip if that's okay with you. Sure. All right, let's do it. You know, prayer's gotten us through it, but Mm. that whole year we got, we made it to Tennessee and that first year here was amazing. Like everything worked seamlessly together until we tried to buy a house. So we rented for a year. We tried to buy a house. Uh, We ended up moving into a house for three weeks. And then, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was just a big, just the housing crisis. So we had to move out of that house. We were there for three weeks. We had packed up again, found a rental. We were there for two months Mm -hmm. and our kids got sick and there was a mold issue. And Mm -hmm. so from that house, we um, moved into an above garage apartment it was a one room apartment. Um, How many of you? There was six of us at the time. Now we wow. now there's seven of us, but there are six of us living in this one room apartment. Mm-hmm. And we thought we'd be there for maybe two weeks till we figured everything out. We were there for four months. Wow. Through Christmas. Wow. Um, and it was a bed, a couch, and a TV, and a little kitchenette. Couldn't really cook anything in there, but it was a tiny little fridge. And the kids just took turns sleeping on the couch. Or on little dog beds or pillows. And it was kind of like, you know, a camp out. And we made the most of it. And some of the, the memories that we made there through Christmas, like, I'm like, we're celebrating Christmas. I went and got a Christmas mm-hmm. tree. I walked it up the stairs. Um, we're just some sweet times of just simple 
mm-hmm. living. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just showed us that we don't need. The stuff doesn't this, make a home. Mm-hmm. 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 The it stuff doesn't. doesn't make a home. Yeah. It's being together. Yeah. Okay. That was awesome. Um, I'm so glad that you get to be involved with this. I've watched the first two episodes so far. I think you guys just released the third one. And as yep. we're talking, I think you're, you've already recorded for the whole first season. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Sweet. Um, so where can folks tune in and, and uh, watch your podcast? So you can go to accessmore.com or you can download the app on your phone and you can listen to the podcast, but it's also a video podcast. So you can watch the video podcast on their website, accessmore.com. You can also follow Mum Life Community on Facebook and Instagram for more updates. Um, and every there's a new podcast every Monday okay. um, that, that launches out and you could um, listen to it on your way to work while you're folding laundry, while you're cooking dinner, or you can watch it um, on their website, accessmore.com. Well, I just got to tell you, you know, we, we are very passionate about supporting women um, as well. And so I want to just say thank you very much for being a part of something like that and creating something like that, that is, um, you know, specifically geared towards women for women. I just think that that's such a wonderful ministry and I'm really excited to share that with our listeners. Yeah. Well, thanks for being with us today. This was awesome <laughs> getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, we definitely need to do lunch, you know, post pandemic. Absolutely. And kind of compare notes on our moves to from California to Tennessee. Um, or maybe just have, you know, Billy tell you sometime at lunch. Yeah. We certainly have more to talk about. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm thrilled to get to know you guys a little bit more and um, to have this conversation. Well, so for more information on Project Brickworks and how you can get involved, visit us online at projectbrickworks.org. Follow us on Instagram, like our Facebook page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and turn on notifications. We love you all. Be blessed. And we'll see you next time. Bye.